Welcome to Just Relationships, the show that offers you concrete ways to make your relationships better. Whether it's your boss, your spouse, your children, or your friends, the quality of your relationships in life directly affects how you feel about yourself and the success you achieve. Your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer, a psychotherapist, telecoach, author, and seminar leader, will interview top experts to help you learn to manage this essential part of your life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer. Greetings to you. Well, if you listened to last week's show, then you know that Reese Thomas is back letting us know about the nature of life purpose, and there are five, and most people do not know what their purpose is or they're not really, really clear about it, and and I want to introduce to you Reese Thomas, who is the author of Discover Your Purpose, How to Use the Five Life Purpose Profiles to Unlock Your Hidden Potential and Live the Life You Were Meant to Live. And Reese is the creator of the Reese Method, Life Purpose Profiles. So Reese, you went ahead and and created these these profiles, and these are um, instruments or assessments that people can take to just determine which is theirs. And for, for if you didn't listen to the show last week, then uh, you, uh, I just want you to know that Reese Thomas is talking about discovering one's life purpose rather than creating one's life purpose, that this is a calling of the soul. And this is something, would you say, Reese, that, that we're born with? We're born with it, yes. It's, so it's a, and we're we're born. So so the the way I see it work energetically is that we come into the world and and we're really non-form, right? We come into the world and and we're not a boy or a girl or wear pink or blue or have a religion or uh, really anything. We come into the world and we are just completely open. And, and, and all of life is, is, is possibility. And we're not even, uh, we're, you know, and, and even, even up till two years old or so, uh, we aren't really even that attuned with our body. We're, we're really looking out sort of like we have, we're just this radiating out energy, which is mm. the soul, which is really the soul itself. Mm. And the child experiences itself as, as connected to all things and non-form and not separate and independent. And yet, and yet what happens is, is that if the child stays like that, they will be sent to therapy immediately. They will be seen as, <laughs> as being, uh, you know, relatively retarded because they're not going to learn a language. They're not going to pay attention to, to what they're supposed to be paying attention to. They're not going to be getting ready for school for sure. And, and so, and so the child finds out that they get tension, attention either given to them or taken away. Love being given to them or taken away based on which, which parts of their psyche and, 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 and behaviors are acceptable and which ones are not. Right. And so we all at some point in our lives uh, have to make the choice between being loved and being who we are. Mm-hmm. Because who we are doesn't have all of these hard edges and forms and isn't dependent upon knowing that this is my bike or my room or my mommy or things like that. So that, so that can define us. We came in already defined. And so when we gave that up and we, and everybody makes a choice, by the way, everybody makes mm. a choice, even the rebels, mm-hmm. <laughs> even the person says, no, I didn't make the choice to, to, you know, be loved. I was, I'm a rebel, but that's just the identical choice. It's just the shadow choice of, of, you know, the parents are still in charge. You're still made a choice to be this one thing, uh, that you're, and oh. rather than all the things. And so we all make the choice to be loved, mm. um, m- more than be ourselves because right. we know that we're little children and we can't just go it alone. We can't can't, we have to conform in some way. And that right. then leads to a lifetime of trying to be what other people want us to be and, right. and, and, then, and, and trying to be the best us, which means the most accepted us right. rather than the real us. Mm-hmm. And, so, and so, yes, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the realization that we all came in knowing, knowing who mm-hmm. we were 
we spent, you know, you often 40 years, 30, 30 to 40 years trying to be something that we aren't and then realizing that that whole sort of addictive pattern of trying to be this person, trying to be good and trying to be smart and trying to be a caretaking or a loving person or a, or a successful person or a smart person or all these things that we're trying to be all the time are elements of who we are, but they aren't our whole self. And, yes. and they are always a false promise, mm-hmm. and they always lead to, ultimately, to either some sort of uh, uh, emotional or physical uh, or psychological illness that yeah. then forces us to look at ourselves in our midlife and say, oh, what mm-hmm. did I miss here? How did, mm-hmm. I, get, how did I get here? Because I did everything right. Right, according to somebody else's rules, and somehow they changed the rules midstream, or what on earth happened here? Right, yes. exactly. So they get this dis-ease, and, yes. they, and we are, in my view, a nation of addicts, and yep. they're often hidden addictions, process addictions, not necessarily substance addictions like shopping or eating or gambling. So you're not No, we have addictions to being good. Exactly. We have, yes. we have addictions to, to, to making, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to, to money being the source of my, my deepest happiness. You know, right, that right. I'm going to make this money. It's going to make me happy. And, you know, and uh, mm. uh, addictions to, uh, to, to charity. And as crazy as it is, it's like, you know, ha- ha- there are a lot of people that are, that are into charity, not for the charity, but because it makes them look good as people. Right. Looking the whole looking good. And I'm thinking about when you use the term shadow choice, which I love. I'm thinking about something that Jung said. He said, I'd rather be whole than good. Yes, that's yes. that is a, that's a wonderful, a wonderful statement. And, and and that's what we were as children. I mean, as children, we didn't we didn't we didn't think twice about running around naked right mm-hmm. we didn't think twice about uh you know touching parts of our body or or you know or saying certain things or mm-hmm. you know when when your parents say go hug so and so and you go no i don't like her it's like you don't say that or or your <laughs> child right. you know a little, a little child doesn't think twice about about going to swing at their parent who's holding them back from from running across the street even though the parent knows they're holding them back from running across the street because there's a car coming Mm-hmm. But the child responds to life just as a natural reaction until the parent says, we do not hit each other in this family model. And then all of a sudden right. the child realizes that, that there's a, you know, there's a 18 foot tall monster standing over them that's mm-hmm. angry and, and mm-hmm. you know, breathing fire. And if they want to survive, they're going to have to comply. And that's, and, and we learn to shut down ourselves throughout our lives more than expand ourselves. And so the, and so the discovering your purpose is about discovering not how to behave better, but how to feel and be called to our lives and, and feel this deeper quality that had always existed. So in my book, there's a, there's a section called Your Secret Place. Mm. And everybody has what I call the breadcrumbs. Our soul has always left breadcrumbs. So the soul never leaves you completely without a path back to it. Mm. And, and one of the breadcrumbs is the secret place where each of us have some place that we as a child or as a teenager or somewhere in our lives had a had a place that we went and were just able to be totally ourselves mm-hmm. it could have been you know somewhere dancing or or playing or out in the woods or hidden in a in in the basement or in a cubby hole or in something but some place that was yours and when you were there you were outside the energy the energetics of your parents home mm. and so you were able to totally expand your energy and not feel like st- like in, in the parents' home we all uh, run into some sort of a of a this space is slightly smaller than I may, than than my energy mm-hmm. and there's always a limitation in a way to, of being because there's an expectation that you should be not quite your whole self but be just be the good parts mm-hmm. and um, whereas when we're in that place in that secret place we remember what it's like to be that and and when you know your secret place and i had i had a couple of them uh and and one of my favorite ones because of what i do in the school it's a it's a um you know very important uh place for me i used to go to a uh, a place up in the woods behind my house we had a house that was right on a large set of woods 
and there were some rocks up there, and the rocks sort of made these big V's, and I would go down in the V, and, and sort of like I was out of the wind and in the sun, and there was always sticks and rocks and things in there and dirt, and I would, in my mind, be making superheroes in there. I would make them with capes, and I would they could mm. fly, and they could they could disappear, and they could uh, super think, and they could do and every they all could do all these amazing things, and um and and I loved doing that. I loved the idea of a superhero. And now what do I do? I run a I run an energy medicine school, a three year training in energy medicine in the Boston area, and um. And and I teach people to be that superhero, and this and these profiles are literally your superhero inside of you. That when you get in touch with that, you realize that it has an enormous gift. So even the softest, you know, the, the, we we talked about the five uh, on the last show. We talked about the five qualities, which are great super thinkers, deep deep feelers and lovers, caretakers who care a lot about you, but they're there for you, supportive wise. And then you've got the achievers in the world who show us how to do it perfectly. And then we have leaders who basically are going to be on top, whatever. You know, they're always going to want to be in charge in one way or the other. They're either going to do it in the light or the shadow, and and uh, you know mm. they'll they'll either be the Hitler or the Christ. And and they are, mm. and they'll but they but they're going to lead one way or the other and and they uh and, and so and so we have we have each of those uh each of those elements and even the softest most emotional sensitive person in the world is a that's a leadership quality that's a that's a that's an essential superpower mm. that that when someone is around that they feel feel loved it's like it's like i was I, I i liken that to the the little old grandmother who brings out cookies and mm. she's the emotional intelligent what we call the emotional intelligence special she's the super emotional one and every cookie she bakes she bakes with love mm. and when you and when you eat that cookie you literally melt yourself because you're like wow i don't know why this cookie's so delicious it's right. because it's filled with that love and that's what and that's her superpower each of us have a superpower that isn't that has nothing to do with conquering some other country and and taking their resources which is the only power we are taught about in our in our culture the real powers come in these very subtle soul qualities oh i love it and as you're talking Reese Thomas, and I want everyone to know that this is Dr. Duffy Spencer. We are Just Relationships, WHPC 90.3, and Reese Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, is the author of Discover Your Purpose, How to Use the Five Life Purpose Profiles to Unlock Your Hidden Potential and Live the Life You Were Meant to Live. And you can you can get your book, Reese, through your own website, I guess, Discover Your Purpose um, Book dot com, where you get only the, not only the book but uh, other bonuses. You yes, know, there yes. are there. We do. Uh, I have a I have a keynote talk that I have given. Uh, about the profiles, uh, so that you can kind of get an introduction. And then there's also a member site, which has some, which has a number of, of other, uh, tools and meditations and guided meditations that help you, uh, find your profile and, and you know, even, even, uh, even faster than just reading, reading the book. So yes, if you go to discoveryourpurposebook.com, you can buy it on my site. It'll still come from Amazon, but, uh, but you can also get the bonuses there, or you can just go to Amazon or Barnes and Nobles and they, and they both carry it. So it's everywhere, online, in local bookstores, as well as on your own site, discoveryourpurposebook.com. And I also just wanted to let people know that you actually have a yearly and annual every spring event called awakenevent.com. And it's a live event where you actually do demos, demonstrations of helping people find their purpose and and kind of almost reclaiming themselves. Absolutely. And and I run an energy medicine school, which is a full spectrum energy school. So so we use the profile system. Your your purpose is the foundation of all of your energy. And so and so when you if, if you if you 
you know, a lot of people understand the soul, there's a soul quality within us, and we have these chakras. But they forget that the soul itself doesn't need a purpose. It's, 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 a, it's, like, a, it's like your character. It's like this wonderful mm. thing. But in our body,